Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Chaos TV Challenger Series Qualifications. This is Ultra Virus versus Shen Ulti. My name is Nature. I'm joined by Rapid. How are you doing, Rapid? I am absolutely amazing. Pumped to be here and pumped to announce the two teams that uh, you just did. Uh, uh, Ultra Virus, like these guys have been around for so long before anybody heard of you know teams from the CIS or or uh, teams from you know the uh, just Russia as as a whole. It's these guys were playing in tournaments like EES back when it was ESL Major Series. They were still competing and they've been together for so long now. Not with the Gaming Gear EU team that they kind of had their rise to fame with, but it's gonna be awesome to see their roster back and taking on a little bit of a newcomer here. Yeah, so um, we do have the picks and bans coming in here quite fast. Casted in Elise, Ziggs, Evelyn, Shivana, and Oriana being banned. Elenir picking up in the Annie, which is probably being uh, going to be a support Annie. However, we have seen some mid Annies, but it would surprise me to see that coming out here. As we do have Pulse H7 hovering over the uh, Lucian and the Sona picking those uh, picking those for Shen Ulti. Now keep in mind I am a little bit behind as I am watching from stream. Rapid however is watching live from the client. This is true. That means that I can say oh and they lock in the pick and then they, they won't actually lock it in and you'll just go on about it. No, don't worry. Don't worry. No trolls here but are going to be uh, the first few picks coming out. It's going to be Annie the first pick immediately locked in there for Elunir. So we're going to have to see if Majin wants to pull out his mid lane Annie or if he's got some other plans for that. But probably will be support down in the bottom lane. Deadly Brother thinking about the Jinx, but you kind of have to go with the Sibber. And uh, especially like watching OGN last night, it was interesting to see how there are a pool of about of almost exactly 10 champions that make it through picks and bans. And somehow you have to make two teams out of those because the meta is very, uh, or the, the very strong champions are very well defined right now. Yeah, so I was asking someone uh, earlier today uh, about Ziggs, what made Ziggs uh, pop up so suddenly in the scene, and uh, he couldn't give me such a clear answer because I don't think Ziggs was buffed or anything like that, so I was wondering maybe you could. Oh uh, yeah, Ziggs actually was buffed just a oh. little bit. It was the strangest thing. They added 50% extra damage to minions, or double damage to minions from his minefield. So that means that if he wasn't as good at wave clear before, he was ridiculously good now. So you can wave clear really well. But the big thing about Ziggs is that, especially with Nidalee getting hit with a little bit of a nerf, uh, it just poke and wave clear. You can wave clear for days. He's kind of like a really quick, immediate Anivia. Uh, whereas Anivia would have to sit there with her uh, with her snow out there. He, Ziggs just explodes everything. Has a, some global presence too. Just offers a lot to the team. Only problem is it's a little bit immobile. So if you go for the dive comp, then it's going to work pretty well against Ziggs. So, uh, so far, haven't seen any mid laners picked up. So definitely still on the table. Yeah, so... Uh... Shen Ulti looking to pick up a mid laner as their very last pick for now. On the other side, however, Ultra Virez have locked in, of course, the uh, Sivir and uh, the Vi alongside the Annie they had picked up earlier. MBS Law and Mazarin now look, uh, look to pick up the very last champions for their team. Uh, they are hovering over the Zed and the Rengar for now, which would not surprise me too much. Um, although I would uh, be keen, I would... Look forward to see how they actually put that to use as they change out the Z to the Ari. Of course, a very, very dominant pick lately as well. All right, and there you go. It's going to be the, the Rengar pick as well as the Ari. So Ari locked in uh, not the last pick in the game because it was countered out, not necessarily countered out, by Agragas. And the interesting thing to me is to see Mazarin actually go for the Ari instead of the Gragas, because he was known for so long as just one of the most dominant Gragas players, and then you realize he actually has an incredibly deep champion pool, and for a team like Gaming Gear EU that, like I said, not a lot of people have heard of before going into Worlds, people are like, who is this Mazarin guy, what does he play, and the answer was everything. So, goes for the Ari pick, and haven't really seen a whole lot of Ari here in Season 4. No, neither have I. Um, although I believe, uh, yeah, of course, we have seen it a couple of times and it has been quite strong. But then again, it has had to face off against the likes of something like a Gragas, an Oriana, or maybe even a Ziggs. Um, since those other three champions are really, really um, powerful in this new meta or in this uh, meta that is still getting established for now, um, Annie is, uh, uh, Ari rather, is uh, having some trouble 
uh, keeping our head up. But for now, it looks like Mazarin is nonetheless going with it. MBS Law picking up the Rengar. And um, on the other side, of course, it is uh, the Gragas for Pulse. Meaning we have our teams. Um, who would you favor uh, according to composition here, Rapid? Well, uh, before you go into composition, you have to look at uh, Ultra Virus. They've been uh, been around for a long time, and while have, having some issues on the world stage, especially in their own region, uh, very, very strong team. And especially with the champion choices that they have here, Sivir, Rengar, both incredibly strong. And then you look at their support and support Annie. That is just like, that's top tier supports, top tier top laners, and then 80 carries as well. Just a lot of strength in all their lanes. Now, you you kind of look at their team as the ideal, with the exception of that Ari pick. And so really interested to see what Mazarin's going to do with that. Uh, because especially going up against Shenelty's comp, it's very standard, but at the same time, it's not something that if you were blind picking, you'd come up with this team composition. Lucian, very strong. And Sona, she's definitely in there, and especially in Season 4, works pretty well. Renekton, just pretty standard top laner, but Rengar... He doesn't actually fight against the top laner because you can't really do too much against him. They'll just ult and walk away. He fights against the rest of the team and is that super tanky menace. So if NBS falls behind early on, that could set behind Ultra Virus's mid game and may pose some problems for contesting any early objectives. Regardless, ladies and gentlemen, we will be heading into a quick commercial break when we come back. Ultra Virus and Shen Ulti face off in a best of three on the Summoner's Rift. We will see you soon. And you're off.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Chaos TV's presentation of the US Challenger Series qualifiers. Turns out there's a lot of teams that want to get in, so we're going to have some qualifiers here for everyone watching. Do hope you guys enjoy the stream. I am Rapid. I'm here with Nature, and we are in to Ultra Virus, the X Gaming Gear EU team in the blue, taking on Shen Ulti, the equally challenger, but challenging team in the red. Yeah, it is going to be quite the match here, and uh, as I believe I told you earlier, or hang on for a second because we might have some action here, Chris is getting uh, caught a little bit, he does manage to get out in the end, but we did have actually 64 teams signing up for the qualifier, so that uh, does prove us how uh, popular this tournament actually is, and uh, we are quite content with that on the side of Chaos, of course. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it, too. It means a lot of great teams competing. And uh, if you actually check out the brackets for the EUS uh, Challenger Series qualifiers, literally every good Challenger tier team uh, in Europe is in those uh, qualifiers. Even some CIS teams, like uh, I mentioned here in X Gaming Gear EU, now Ultra Virus. So we're going to start things off. This is Season 4. It's a 3.14 patch. So things are a little bit new. We'll be experiencing some of those uh, the, the trials and tribulations as both teams do try to learn that. You can see Trinket's picked up. There's actually going to be two sweeping lenses there for Ultra Virus, but with only one on the support for a little bit of lane control for Shen LT. Mm -hmm. So for now, it doesn't look like we uh, will have a really... A weird start, if you will, as both teams are looking to pick up their own respective blue buffs and uh, continue on with their quote-unquote normal jungle paths, as in the middle lane, of course, Mazarin facing off against Pulse. Um, that is probably going to be quite an interesting matchup, uh, as I'm really keen to see, if you will, how Mazarin faces off against the Gragas, as because of, you, as you said, we don't really see the RE too often nowadays. Okay, so um, it appears rapid. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay, no, it's, it's, it's okay. Don't worry. Crisis averted. It's all good. Yeah, a little bit of damage put on to uh, Say up there in the top lane. As you can see, Coralius is like taking minions just nowhere near that minion wave is anywhere that Renekton is going to be. NBS, bottom lane as well, going to get uh, is uh, found out. But in the jungle, Crusoe's on a Lunar. Yeah, Lunar barely manages to get out with a Volt Breaker. In the end, Crusoe did... Uh, Eventually, uh, will eventually rather be able to pick up that red buff. As uh, Alanir almost got to intervene there, but he didn't quite in the end. Now we do have a little bit of a lane swap coming out here of, um, I believe, Ultra Virus. Yeah, it is Ultra Virus. And um, how do you think uh, Say and MBS Law are going to uh, fare here in these uh, two versus one lanes? Okay, well, the lane swap was originally there to support a Lunir as he went to counter jungle, but Coralius and Deadly Brother didn't even go to help him. So for right now, uh, maybe the early benefit for that not effective. Crusoe's recognized, hey, he had a little bit of an advantage, but shows up to counter jungle the red buff away just a little bit late. Now we'll find a Lunir in the jungle. A Lunir is pretty dead. Yeah, Lunir is going to be in real, real trouble here. Uses the Volbaker, will be forced to flash. Mazarin gets a little bit of damage on him. He does manage to land the charm on Pulse. And Pulse will be leaving him be for now. Mazarin will probably be forced to back here as he has lost a lot of health. Ward gets popped in there by Cruisers. Doesn't quite manage to land the Sonic Wave. And we do have a pause coming in here. All right, so a little bit of a break. And by a Lunar being pretty dead, I was like, hey, if he doesn't have, if he doesn't flash away immediately, then he's going to have a bad time. And apparently the pause is because a Lunar has been lagging a little bit. So we're going to take a little break to get him back in there. And that might have been why it took him so long to flash away. I was like, he just used his Vault Breaker. So he's not going to be able to just jump right over the wall the, the easy way. Had to burn that flash. And already you can see Crusoe's. He chose not to do his red buff and instead to push a Lunar out. Great decision there uh, just to see that coming. And then... Additionally, followed that up by going into a Lunar's jungle, knew he was going to be pretty low and was able to push him back to base. So uh, if Crusoe wants double golems, he can take them, but is moving down towards that bottom lane. Now we might have NBS Lul is going to be in trouble here as Crusoe is closing in on him fast. Meanwhile, we do have in that middle lane Mazarin taking a little bit of damage as he is flashing up red. Now Crusoe looking for that pick in the bottom lane. NBS Lul does recognize the danger here and he will be keeping a safe distance. 
Yeah, and NBS lol, he's playing this very, very well. He knows the vulnerabilities, and so he waited until Alunir came back into lane just to make sure he could hold things off at his turret. And you might actually see Alunir go and help him out in lane here in just a second. But uh, that was just like going towards that middle lane. Mazarin does get hit there and immediately flashes through the turret. Yeah, first blood going over to Shen Ulti. Crusoe's almost went down to the turret if he would have taken another shot there. He did not in the end. Ignite was ticking on him, but he does manage to survive. As Miwa in the bottom lane, we do have Mopsio and Adams pushing a little, uh, quite hard rather, as uh, they will probably be taking down this turret in the next wave or two, as uh, MBS Law really has not that uh, good of wave clears. Yeah, NBS is going to have a little bit of a rough time wave clearing that bottom turret actually could go down the next wave. I think NBS should be able to keep it alive for at least one more. But top lane, you can see the same amount of pushing there from Coralius and Deadly Brother, who will be able to keep that, uh, to take that turret down basically the same time. Yeah, they are putting up some good pressure of themselves, as they say, is trying to defend it, of course, as good as he can. But in the end, uh, it is, of course, very, very hard to defend a turret against two arranged characters, or champions, if you will, as they right now are pushing in towards that turret. We do have Crusoe's lurking around the side here. They destroy the turret in the bottom lane on the side of uh, oh Penalty. Now, we do have Coralius going down, Deadly Brother, trying to desperately escape, being forced to flash. Crusoe's now trying to chase him down, Deadly Brother does get hit by the Sonic Wave, is now standing on his turret, he has used the barrier, doesn't quite manage to get Cruzos, but the turret will finish him off, that is a shutdown coming on in him, and Bounty going over to Deadly Brother. But still, like, the reason, the decision to trade his life for Deadly Brother, Mazarin taking a lot of damage there, he's gonna take one more body slam, oh, and the taunt misses, if that charm landed onto uh, H7, then probably would have seen him go down, but... A nice kill deep underneath that turret. So a lot of action across the map. You can see basically half the team for both teams is back in base healing. Just because of all of that stuff going on there. Yeah, so in the top lane, Alanir has been tasked with defending that top tier one turret. As we do have Say uh, backing away as he is sitting on 1300 gold. So he will be picking himself up something nice as he exchanges the warding totem for the sweeping lens. Buys himself some boots of speed and of course the giant's belt which uh, will enable him to stay in lane that much longer now he has been uh, switched over to the bottom lane as we do have mopsio and adams rotating over towards that top lane and uh and near if he stays here for too long he might be in trouble but i don't think that is going to be a real danger for him Alright, so as far as starting items are concerned, I'm pretty sure I saw Relic Shield to start off the game, but I can't quite find that now. It's just going to be the uh, Ancient Coins and the Nomads Medallions, and uh, we've actually seen a switch over to that Ancient Coin because of the nerfs to Relic Shield and then Targon's Brace that we saw so many of in the early parts of Season 4. So, fairly standard supports. We actually did see the 1v1 matchup of NBS versus uh, uh, Say in that bottom lane, but immediately switched out as soon as they saw where Renekton was, because uh, it looks like Eldraviras want to keep that 2v1 matchup alive. Yeah, however, Shen Ulti are pushing really, really hard on that top lane. And I'm not too it's sure. Oh, meanwhile, in the middle uh, lane, we do have seven. Mazarin going down here. And it was the same combo that took out Mazarin uh, as when they went for the turret dive. This time it was only a 1v1. Uh, A7 just went in. Top lane, though, Adam gets locked up. Yeah, it takes a lot of damage. Now they're trying to follow up on Mopsio. Mopsio does manage to get out for now, but they are still chasing him. He's trying to turn this one around. Alanir taking a lot of damage. He will turn this one around, and Alanir goes down. Here is Crusoe, though. MBS Lil taking a lot of damage as he is forced to flash out. Being slowed down, he uses the heal, and he will be able to escape on his turret. But is it enough as Crusoe will be able to finish him off with the Dragon's Rage? I love how Crusoe's dropped a ward when Mopsio is, like, right there to safeguard away to you, but... Maybe he trusts the ward more than he trusts uh, Lucian. Bottom lane, the turret does fall. Top turret will fall very shortly, so should keep it uh, about even. Might take another wave before that one goes down. But for now, seven kills very, very early on. And a little bit of a canceled culling there for some reason. But uh, yeah, very strong early start there for Chanel. Yeah, they are indeed starting off extremely convincing here as Mazarin has got his turret destroyed as well. And that means he is going to be forced uh, under his 
second tier turret if uh, Pulse decides to show that lane in for now Mazarin is uh, still standing under the wreckage of his tier 1 turret but that does enable the uh, Shen ulti team to get a little bit of uh, get a little bit more roam in there because uh, that tier 1 turret is not deterring them from uh, going in between those jungle paths of their enemy all right, so right now we're going to see a little bit of extra pressure there. Eluder's going to clear out the ward placed at his own red buff, but can he get that down? No, it's actually taken away there as H7 grabs it with the explosive cast. Uh, we've seen this in almost every single tournament series. It's just in the world. Gragas steals so well. It's kind of like uh, in Season 2, you'd see Lux steal things because there's just so much burst you can throw out there with the ultimates. And now a dragon going down as everything going the way here of Shen ulti. Now up to a 4,000 gold lead. Yeah, that is the not ideal. That is not ideal for the uh, Ultra Virus team at all, as there you have it. The uh, Shen Ulti team starts roaming their enemy's jungle. Crusoe's and Adam's putting in some pink wards there. A little bit of a miscommunication with the double ward in that red buff brush, as they will be backing away for now. Mazarin has to be really, really careful here, as it looks like Shen Ulti is starting to push this middle lane. All right, so Shen Ulti, they're going to start to hammer their advantage home. Uh, it's actually going to be crescendo mid lane. Yeah, Mazarin does manage to get out with the Spirit Rush, however. Now Alanir might be in trouble as Crusoe's joins the party. Karalius being tasked with defending this turn as well. He has got his stun Tibbers available if he chooses to go for that. Now he has burned his stun. Colin comes out. Karalius takes a little bit of poke. Doesn't get quite lethal yet. And for now, it looks like they will be successful in defending this turn. So NBS, man, this guy has had a little bit of a rough lane and is going for offensive burst damage, Rengar, instead of the tanky monster that we've seen uh, so much out of uh, Southeast Asia and Korea. You just go Sunfire Cape, Spirit Massage, and you never, ever die. But NBS will now find Crusoe, so he could have his hands full. Yeah, he is trying to run away desperately here, but the red buff procs are deterring him from doing so, as Crusoe is, does uh, back away in the end, and he will let NBS lol be for now. That did show MBS Law, however, how much he has to look out for Crusoe's because he is starting to get really, really dangerous. And you can see that Say actually went for the standard tanky Renekton build, looking for that Sunfire Cape first. I mean, we're only 12 minutes into the game. It feels a lot later, but going for those big tank items, especially so early on, is really, really good. And you can see that uh, that's literally the only thing that Crusoe's has bought is just health. He grabs a Sight Stone, he also grabbed that Spirit of the Ancient Golem. He's got some extra stats there, but the big deal is it makes you big, it makes you tanky, and it makes you able to dive turrets. And League of Legends right now, it's kind of a, a battle to how quickly can you make turrets not actually matter. You tank them up, you go for the dives, you force those turrets down. And it's 2-2 two to two right now. We've been seeing more champions be forced down here by Shen Ulti, but now with all that strength under their belts, should look to see some extra turrets to fall. Yeah, and this law is having a little bit of trouble in that top lane, dealing with Se as Se is continuously pushing those lanes in toward his, in towards NBS Law's turret rather. And he is, um, as I said, not having too good of a time defending that. <laughs> As, Look uh, at Shen Ulti right now. Look at where they're moving on the map. It's like they literally all clicked on that top turret. They are all going to head there. Lunar locks up Crusoe's. Yeah, Crusoe's does manage to get out though. And it is looking like this blue buff is going to be a big contention point. For now, Alanir looking around the side maybe to get a pick there. NBS Lol doing as much or doing as much damage to he can, uh, as he can towards that blue buff. Blue buff will not die for now as they are desperate to do more damage but it will be gifted over to Mazarin and that will uh, force Shen Ulti to back away. Yeah, I was actually surprised. Crusoe's didn't even try for the smite steal and they actually got the blue buff onto Mazarin. So Ultra Virus will be able to hang on to that buff for now and that actually should help them defend this top turret too. Sorry has a lot of wave clear left to offer Crusoe's and Sonic Wave won't go in. Siege is very strong here for Shen Ulti as they look to push down their second tier top lane turret. Yeah, this is dangerous for Ultra Virus as uh, they've got a good wave clear, but the other team has got quite a good dive combination if they choose to do so. They are backing away. They are looking for a little uh, safer 
uh, move here, maybe, as they are heading towards that middle turret. They are grouping up in that bush, and uh, they will probably be pushing this lane and maybe take that turret by storm. Also, viewers, however, have predicted this as they did see the minions going down, and they are standing by to defend this turret as needed. So the defense in the mid lane is going to... You saw a very good rotation there from top to mid. X Gaming Gear EU now Ultra Viras. They know how to defend their turrets. They have the wave clear that they need. They just don't have the actual ability to fight. So like you mentioned with the dive comp here from Shen Ulti, I, I mean, they named their team not for the champion Shen Ulti, but for the fact that they love to use that ulti to dive when they do get that champion. And with this dive comp here, they, they aren't actually using it. They're more just trying to catch... Um, trying to catch Ultra Virus out in their own jungle as they rotate, or trying to pick them off as they switch between those turrets, and in the meantime, they will starve them out of the buffs. Yeah, they are continuously rotating through Ultra Virus's jungle. For now, Keralius has uh, been sent down towards that bottom lane alongside Deadly Brother. It is looking like they might have quite a hard time as they are with only two players, of course, versus the four of Shen Ulti. Shen Ulti, however, is not going in quite yet, as they might sense the danger of NBS Law being relatively close, and they continue rotating. All right, yeah, they're going to be spinning right round for a while here as they just move between the lanes. Should have a pause here in a second, as apparently Mopsio is having some uh, connection issues. And, you know, sometimes those issues can make teams play more passively, but it does look like he's going to be back in the game in no time at all. So should be able to get this started back up here any second. And I actually like what um, Shen Ulti are doing, because they're not going for aggressive dives, they're not forcing the issue. They're saying, hey, the longer the game stays the way it is right now, the stronger we get, and the weaker you guys get. So they're depriving them of buffs, uh, tried to take away blue buff, but did secure their red buff, and uh, now they're gonna take Dragon as well, so just trying to take as many objectives as they can, denying all of them their from Ultra Virus. Yeah, Dragon will be coming up around about now. And they'll be just bursting that down within a couple of seconds. No problem for them at all. As you have H7 in the meantime going over towards that top lane. As there is a huge, huge wave uh, forming up in the top lane. So we will be taking that one out. That might just give Ultra Virus a slight window in which they uh, can make something happen because everyone is going back to base on the Shen ulti team and H7 is in that top lane of course but it is looking like they really want to uh, get back that vision control they had over their jungle as they really do not have it at this point. Uh, so Lucian's going for the Trinity Force build, uh, but he hasn't. He, he stalled his Trinity Force for as long as you could possibly do it. Uh, the only thing that you could do longer is to pick up Boots instead. He went double Dorant, Vamp Scepter, and now finally is about there. But he's down about 30 CS uh, against Deadly Brother. So if you're looking for strength there in the lineup on uh, an Ultra Virus, because they don't, they may not have a lot of it, but they definitely have an 80 carry. That's starting to pull his own weight. Yeah. So. Uh... That, uh, well, sorry about that, as well, we do have uh, H7 and Adams right now pushing in this middle lane. Uh, Mazarin is going to be able to defend that probably, as Coralius and Alanir are looking around the side to maybe pick someone up here. Sweeping lenses coming out to clear out any unwanted vision on the side of Ultra Virus. Do have Mopsio, who might be in trouble here. Coralius and Alanir are standing next to him almost say is joining him and that will probably not be danger for him meanwhile mbs law getting caught by h7 h7 using the body slam there comes the explosive cask mbs law using the ultimate but will it be enough as he does manage to close uh, to uh largen the gap and he will be getting away and as that gap widens it's gonna be nice to see nbs with a cute dodge there getting out alive but at the same time he's gonna be very far behind from a bunch of the big tank items that you are gonna see say start to pick up there for shen ulti so as far as big tanks are concerned when your mid laner can just blow your enemy blow his opposing tank up i mean that, that really signals that you're gonna need to build some magic assist there for nbs but he still has to complete that sunfire cape so it'll be a long way off from that uh Wave clear still in the middle lane for Ultra Virus, keeps their turrets alive and did a very good job at stalling the game out. Yeah, still nothing happening quite yet here as both teams 
or uh, maybe waiting for the other team to make a move, which is not really happening for now. As we do have Crusoe just rejoining his team. They are rotating over towards that blue buff. They know it's there. They do have the timer, of course, because of last time around they were there. Alanir getting stunned up. That might be trouble here for him. Slice and Dice comes out, but Sai doesn't quite uh, continue on that one. And the blue buff will probably be taken over by Shen Ulti as they do it. Deadly Crusoe sticks it up. Yeah. Go down. He's or will he? Because he does survive somehow. In the meantime, Mazarin takes a lot of damage. He doesn't go down quite yet. Colin comes out, but Mopsio is in real trouble. Stilgers comes out from the other team. He goes down to Alanir as Alanir right now is trying to finish off Adams. Adams taking a lot of damage as well. Coralius will be picking that one up. Coralius now trying to get away. He doesn't quite manage to do so. As I say, he will pick him up. And Crusoe's almost connecting the Sonic Wave, but not quite. As uh, Mazarin, ooh, oh. just dodging the second Sonic Wave there. Twice there, Mazarin dodged away from Sonic Waves that would have killed him. And it was actually really nice to see Crusoe's have some mind games where he looked like he was trying to catch on to Alanir, but then would always throw those cues off towards Deadly Brother and try to take him out instead. But uh, as is, Jungle will continue to be taken away there by uh, Shen Ulti. They're just really starving Ultra Virus out. And if you're UV, what do you do in this situation? The answer is just wave clear. You can see top lane, before H7 went back to base, he just ulted the wave there just to clear it out a little bit to keep his own turrets from getting pushed down. And that is just because the wave clear has been so strong from Ultra Virus. So Ultra Virus just continuing to uh, defend their base, if you will, just clearing out that vision around Baron as uh, Adams is uh, trying to hang on to that single ward in the Baron pit, but it seems like Alanir, uh, well, he will not be spotting that one out and they retain vision control along that Baron pit. So no real chance of taking Baron for now as there is a lot and a lot of wards in there um, from either team for now. Coralius defending that middle lane Adams is heading over towards that blue buff area. He just pops a ward into the bush and nothing really uh, happens. But we might have some action going on in the middle lane. Doesn't look like it for now though. However, Invisible is in that bottom lane and I don't think um, Shen Ulti is going to actually capitalize on that for now. Yes, yeah, so capitalization will be with a lowercase k here. And now as H7 continues to push that mid lane, you can see Mazarin, it's not his day for dodging those Q. He does have a Deathfire Grass finally completed that for those Triple Doran's rings. Triple Doran's, it may look like he built that because he's behind, but that's actually a build that Mazarin does on a lot of champions. He's even gone like quad Doran's on his Orianna before, just as a way to stay strong. But now, here is the group up, the engage. Yeah, MBS Low goes in on towards H7. H7 just gets bursted down. That is a shutdown. MBS Low now trying to get as much kills as possible. Great crescendo comes out. Karan is getting chased down by Crusoe's here as he get, tries to get the kill. Double kill coming in. Double kill coming in for MBS Low as he will probably be picking up the triple. No, he won't. Crusoe's comes in with a great resonating strike. He is getting chased down now. Does manage to land the safeguard and award and will probably be getting out for now. Lands another good sonic wave, but it, oh, he will go in, however, and he is on a killing spree. He will be able to get shut down, however, uh, by Mazarin, as the only remaining member on that Chen LT team is safe. And there you go. It's going to be an overall two for four, so that's still a good trade uh, for, for Ultra Virus, but... You gotta say, it's this Crusoe's guy, man, he's all over everything. Uh, while the rest of his team was dying, he picked up 100% of their kills in grabbing a double kill there for himself. And the engage, man, that's just the power of Sivir. You say Sivir, okay, she's strong. Oh, and uh, she's actually gonna be safe, blocking a Lunar from getting over the wall. And as Sage 7 comes in from behind, NBS is in trouble. Yeah, the Ignite land. But he is trying to turn this one around. He will not be able to do so. And H7 picks up NBS lol. We did have a great charm coming out of Mazarin. But it was not quite enough, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely something to think about if you're, uh, if you're Ultra Virus. You know that you just actually won a team fight when you were about 5,000 gold behind. It really brought the score back to almost even. And, and so now they know that, hey, if we initiate things, we fight on our terms, then it's going to go our way. But if you're uh, you're looking at the rest of Shen ulti, and they are just dictating the pace of this game, going for a Baron that's at half health. 
Yeah, Deadly Brother using the ultimate to scare them away. Baron is scaring them away as well, of course. Boomerang Blade comes out and they will deter Shen Ulti from finishing off that Baron as they will just be regrouping in the middle lane. So a failed Baron attempt right there, but the good thing for Shen Ulti was, of course, they did not lose any, lose any members. The middle turret, however, they will probably be losing. And that is going to be the third turret taken for Ultra Virus as they now tie the turrets count up versus Shen Ulti. And when you look at the time that we are in this game, it's only 25 minutes in. Once again, it seems a lot later, but you're noticing that Ultra Virus, man, they know what they're doing. They're not just running around trying to make something work. They, they have clear objectives in mind, like there, they were trying to stop Baron. Then they went immediately from there. Somebody made the call, hey, we're going to take mid turret. And so they're moving from one objective to the other. While Shen Ulti, while they had a really strong early game, seem to just not know exactly what their next step is. Yeah, they will be finishing off that tier 2 turret in that middle lane, however. So that is another good objective for them taken out. They do... Um, extend their gold lead by 2000 gold as in the middle lane we do have of course that ultra virus team just uh looking what they can do mbs law activates his stealth and morcio gets caught a lot of damage coming down on him he just gets bursted or will he go down for now it doesn't quite get out of there as he goes down to mazarin right now Crusoe is getting chased down by alan here and bs law trying to slow him down desperately mazarin almost oh, mazarin almost dies but it doesn't quite die yet as Say comes in, will be finishing him off. Deadly Brother now trying to get out desperately as Alanir will det be deterring Say from chasing down Deadly Brother. And this is looking to be uh, quite a good fight for Ultra Virus once again. Yeah, now Say, pretty much a Lunar, the only person tanky enough to try to fight Say right now. Uh, needs some backup there. As Say able to get out alive, nobody's going to kill Renekton. Renekton is going to stay deathless for basically the entirety of this game. The only person on. Uh, on Ultra Virus that has any semblance of strength is Deadly Brother, who is just absolutely dominant right now, crushing his opposing AD carry. I think he has like a 70 CS lead right now. NBS fighting out Say there is pretty tanky in his own right, but it's gonna have to fight out against Mopsio. Yeah, Colin comes out, NBS takes a lot of damage. Mopsio will be finishing him off. That really was no uh, trouble for the Shen ulti team as Say uh, did manage to slow him down or stun him up continuously. And that really, um, well, screwed him over, if you will, in the end. As for now, they are looking to push that inhibitor turret in the middle lane. And I'm not too sure that Ultra Virus can actually do anything about this. We do have Deadly Brother coming in around the side, however. Here comes Alanir trying to desperately defend that turret. Mopsio is really deep. Charm lands. A lot of damage coming down on him. He will be finished off by Mazarin. Right now, Say taking a lot of damage as well. Deadly Brother activates the ultimate boomerang blade will be finishing him off now Mazarin and the rest of his team trying to chase down Crusoe's Crusoe's gets charmed up as well double kill coming in for Deadly Brother and that is yet another good fight for Ultra Virus. and a couple of crucial things happen it's Renekton's job to dive Deadly Brother and he did a it did a great job of that he pressured him off of that fight so for the longest time of that fight Deadly Brother wasn't really a factor the only problem is that the rest of Ultra Virus were able to hang on long enough for Deadly Brother to spell shield the stun from Renekton when he went in and to kite down Renekton afterwards. And he fell, Crusoe's fall fell thereafter. And with no jungle pressure, Ultra Virus start onto the Baron. Yeah, explosive cask is not available for H7, and they have to know this because that would uh, the only way that would be the only way they would actually steal this. Crescendo comes out, Kralis takes a lot of damage. Colin comes in here from Mopsio <coughs> that will be finishing off. Rallies, and they do manage to steal the Baron in the end as the Explosive Cask just came off cooldown. Man, Explosive Cask, we've seen it over and over again. Even earlier in this very game, when H7 was able to steal away a red buff very, very early on. Now it's the Baron buff. Still a little bit of red there in the purple, but a much stronger objective. And as H7 steals that buff away, has he stolen the hopes here for Ultra Virus? I'm not too sure, to be honest, because um, Ultra Virus has continuously, continuously managed to defeat um, Shen Ulti in team fights, and they are looking to start another one off here. Mopsio gets caught, takes a lot of damage. Assault and battery comes in. Mopsio trying to get away. Here comes a charm. He will get blown up by the DFG. Now it's H7's turn to get chased down by Mazarin. Mazarin takes a lot of damage from himself, though. As Say is getting chased down by three members. 
of Ultra Viewers. I'm not too sure they can actually chase him down, <laughs> but they will be able to do so in the end. All right, yeah, you can just see it takes four people an incredibly long time just to take out that Renekton. He's incredibly tanky. He's looking for a Randwin Zoman coming up next. And if you thought he was tanky now, just wait until that happens. Um, I, I like the idea to pick up a Spirit Visage. The only problem is I, I feel like stacking armor as a Renekton whose job it is to dive Deadly Brother would have been a little bit better. He'd have that Randwins. He'd have maybe a... Maybe a Thornmail, maybe just something else to keep Deadly Brother from just killing absolutely everything. Which is kind of what he's doing in this fight. Now 6, 2, and 7 with, like we mentioned, an 80 CS lead over Mopsio on Shen Ulti. Yeah, the CS lead is looking to extend even more every minute. And hold that thought for a second because we do have MBS Law taking a lot of damage as he gets caught. He uses the heal, of course, as he will be... Looking to maybe make something happen here as he gets into the bush. He will not. And the opposing team does choose to uh, decline the chase. And meanwhile, we do have Mazarin heading over towards that top lane to clear out that wave. That might mean we will have Shen Ulti heading in towards the middle lane. As they do uh, not have the threat of Mazarin. But Mazarin, of course, can rejoin the fight fairly quickly. Now, a couple of things to watch out for. Um... The problem for Ultra Virus is they always win these team fights and overstay their welcome. Shenalty respawns and then kills them and takes objectives. So that didn't happen this time. Deadly Brother a little bit of extra mana for there from blocking the Arden Blaze. Push to continue. Flash in there. Timbers down. Yeah, but Mopsio flashes himself from the back. Here we have Alanir. As we do have Mazarin trying to finish off uh, Crusoe's. As we do have Alanir, or uh, Karalia is going down rather. Alanir now in the middle of five, or MBS Law rather, in the middle of five members of the opposing team. It will not be quite enough to finish someone off at all. That is a two for zero right now, and this is not looking good for Ultravirus. Ultravirus just tried to dive Mopsio, but he died. He he got a crescendo from uh, from Adams. Then he got a safeguard from Crusoe's and was able to back out alive. Too much committed to just try to kill the AD carry. And really all Ultra Virus had to do there was just let Deadly Brother do his work. But not able to be super deadly when the rest of your team is running too far away from yourself. Unable to pick up that fight. And now after winning the team fight, keep in mind they, they beat a team with Baron. And now... Shenalty, they will back on off for now. Take away the buffs, just make sure they are as strong as possible looking for the next upcoming push. Not being deadly, I see what you did there. Regardless, we do have a deadly brother uh, now picking up his red buff as we do have on the other side Shen Ulti backing away to their base. They will be picking up themselves some items as they go on a little bit of a shopping spree and they do. Uh, some of them are sitting on a lot and a lot of gold. I'm uh, mostly speaking about Mops here, who is sitting on almost 2,000 gold. And of course, um, H7 as well, who is sitting on 2,000 gold almost as well. Um, he will not be backing away for now. On the other hand, however, we do have Mopsio backing away. And he will probably be picking himself up. Yeah, there you have it. He will be picking himself up a BF sword. That is going to extend his damage or increase his damage even more. Now, that BF sword that you know, Mopsio just bought, I'm not sure about that one. He needs a Last Whisper right now because he's going to have to deal with uh, with Alunir and with NBS, who, while they didn't start off very tanky, are starting to build some armor items of their own. It's going to be a Randuin's there for Alunir, and you already see that Sunfire Cape and Ninja Tabai completed for NBS. NBS had a rough start to the game. Mazarin probably with the roughest start uh, of all. Still now able to pick up kills. He's got the Void Staff and a Deathfire Grass. So if you try to stop the damage coming out of Mazarin, you're going to have a, raw, a, a bad time. He can penetrate your defenses. He can amplify his own damage with the DFG and then with the, uh, the Charm as well. So even though he's behind, he's still going to be a pretty high damage factor in this upcoming fight. The only problem that, uh, that uh, Ultra Veras have are how do they get... To Mopsio, and can they stop the damage coming out from H7, who is still an extremely strong Gragas? Yeah, last time around when we saw them trying to pick up Mopsio, we saw a good flash, to be honest, out of Coralius, who will be stunning up Crusoe's here. A good flash stun on towards Mopsio, but Mopsio was a little bit too fast by flashing out 
just after that uh, by which he deterred Mazarin and the rest of course of the Ultravirus team from uh, continuing the uh, kill potential they had on towards him. Right now the Shen Ulti team is looking to put some pressure on that top tier 2 turret. They're doing it quite a good job. We do have the Deadly Brother Ultimate coming in here. Say so he gets stunned up. Tibbers comes in, but that is a one-man Tibbers. Rally is being forced out of there. Pearls H7 will be picking that one up. As in the meantime, good crescendo. Stuns up three people. That is going to be absolutely horrible for them as the Deadly Brother gets knocked back. That's a triple kill for H7. He will probably be looking up to be looking to pick up his quadra kill right there. There you have it. As Alanir right now is getting chased down. As we do have the shutdown coming in, unfortunately. On towards H7, who did not, uh, was not quite able to make it a penta kill, but a quadra kill is almost as nice. It's a how do you initiate these team fights? For Ultra Virus, they use the anti stun on Say and only Say, and then you look towards Adams, the support for Shen Ulti. He stunned out three people, in, or two people rather, including Deadly Brother, who didn't have his spell shield up to stop that engage. And, and then it, from there on out, it was all follow-up. H7 just ripped the team apart, and as Ultra Virus fell, so did their hopes of, uh, I don't know, using that team fight engage to pick themselves up the game. It's going to be a disengage, no Baron attempt. So you can see that Ultra Virus, they've been overstaying their welcome a lot, and that's not a mistake Shen Ulti are going to make. Yeah. So uh, as you said, quite a questionable... Uh, Tibber's stun out of Coralius right there. We'll be uh, looking to maybe regain a little bit of vision on that Baron Pit. Now, he uh, will be backing away for now without placing any wards, which is uh, uh, interesting uh, to say the least. As for now, MBS Low will be clearing out some wards and he might just be placing some himself, which uh, would make the decision of Coralius much more understandable. There's just one Nexus turret remaining for Ultraviras. As we do have Shen Ulti finishing off the dragon. And uh, they might just start and make something happen uh, right after. Alright, so take two. We see, uh, we've seen one team fight. One there for uh, Shen Ulti. And even though they don't have their namesake there with them, they do have a very strong position here around the barren area and we'll be able to clear out ward coverage which keep in mind is a little bit more difficult here in season four but they do clear that entire area around barren for themselves not gonna start it though quite yet no just uh looking to defend that barren area as um or maybe even bait out ultra here's as we do have the boomerang blade and the charm coming in there charm not quite connecting if that would have connected on someone like uh, adams or maybe mopsio or maybe even H7, that would have probably been quite deadly. Uh, but they are not giving Mazarin the chance to do so, as they are rotating over towards that middle lane. And they have started shoving it in, as we do have the Talisman of Ascension coming out. The uh, Sonic Wave does connect on Mazarin, but they do not decide to follow up on that for now. So for right now, we talked about wave clear being so important for Ultra Virus in the early game. They had a rough early game. Let's just be honest. Mazarin got destroyed in lane by H7, but because they dragged the t the uh, the game out long enough, they had enough time to get some CS under the belt, push things out. They've lost a bunch of turrets there, and well, not their middle inhibitors back up, but they are back in the game sizably. They're not as far behind as they were early on. They have started to get the items they need now. Death cap on Mazarin, so he's going to be dealing a ton of damage. Not quite on the level of H7, though, who did pick up a quadra kill in that last fight, and now has added a Morellonomicon for max CDR. NBS Low finds Say. Say will be able to get out of there with the slippery slice and dice, of course, he has. As we do have Alan here taking a little bit of poke, trying to clear out those uh, wards in the Baron area. They're maybe looking to make something happen here, but they are standing on a ward, so. That is not going to be as sneaky as they might have wanted to. Crusoe is trying to chase down MBS Lawyer. Time's Man of Ascension will speed them up. And MBS Law might be in real, real trouble here. He has been spotted out while he was in stealth. But they will not be following up for now. So for right now, that is going to be Thrill of the Hunt down. I love this combination, uh, this team comp 
here for Ultraviris because it has Thrill of the Hunt and On the Hunt on the same team, so going to be hunting a lot of things, but they've actually been the ones uh, coming in from behind for the longest part. So we'll have to see if they can turn this around and turn into the Hunters as they have been the hunted for the majority of this game. It's up to Coralius, man. If he can land the Timbers on at least two, maybe three, oh. don't include their all books here. Bye bye, Mopsio, as he goes down instantly. Now, Adams might be in trouble as well. We do have Tabers coming out. Adams goes down almost instantly. <clears throat> Sorry, as we do have H7 getting chased down right here. And this little does decide to flash in the end. H7 going down. That is 3 4 0 oh, by one perfectly placed charm. Yeah, I, I don't. Okay, so we talked about how Mazarin had a rough part, maybe lost his team the early game. But let's just be honest, he single handedly. One charm, one death, and then the follow-up kills on every single squishy member that wasn't a tank there. Well, I guess by definition, you're not going to be a tank if you're pretty squishy. But either way, my point is, they killed everybody they needed to, only left Crusoe's and stay alive. Now the damage to back them up, the tanks did have to disengage. Now, it's up to Crusoe's. Can he channel his inner H7 and steal away the second Baron of the game here for Shell? He is certainly looking for it. There is a ward in there to which he can safeguard he will not be doing so he only needs a good resonating strike in there as he is trying to desperately maintain that vision as he has got that sonic wave in there stun comes out they might just try and rush the baron right now he flashes and gets oh the baron my. great uh, whoa sorry great smite out of it and uh, he will be finished off as a result but it doesn't really matter as he did get the baron Keep in mind, his might only does 900 damage now, so it's not where it would be if this were, uh, you know, Season 3. Uh, he actually smoked so quickly that a Lunar didn't even have a chance to get his smite off. So that's the split second that Crusoe's was able to get that in there. I was kind of joking about him channeling his inner H7 because, honestly, how often do you expect your team comp to be able to steal Baron twice in a row? But uh, I don't know if you look towards Elunir to get some better smites or if you just really congratulate uh, Shen Ulti right now because for the second time this game, they have a somewhat undeserved but very well stolen Baron on their entirety of their team. Well, with the exception of Crusoe's. Yeah, he has been doing quite a good job. Um, however, he was the only one to die, which is understandable as well, as he did sacrifice his life to get that Baron. Now, his team is going to be quite content with that, as they uh, might make something happen right as Crusoe's respawns. He has respawned respawn for now, using the home guard to get out of his base faster, of course. And his team is looking to group up now, maybe make something happen, as I said, as, of course, that middle inhibitor is open for the taking. But you're going to have to force your way through that Ultraviris team, which has proven to be quite tough. So Deadly Brother, he's been strong all game long. You can actually see Mazarin, who started off with the worst score early on, has actually caught up to him in kills. So the damage, it's starting to happen there. And something that you'll see a lot more here in Season 4, well, we're still in the preseason, but basically Season 4, is that games last a lot longer. Um, CJ Antis Frost is figuring this out. Uh, one of the most dominant teams in Season 3 can't quite make it happen in Season 4 because they play so much for the early game, which now doesn't really matter quite as much as it used to. It's still important. We saw a lot of early advantages go over to Shen Ulti, taking a lot of uh, early objectives. But now, we're starting to get onto that 40-50 minute mark, and if you were down early on, it just doesn't matter when you have 60-70,000 gold in your inventory. No, it certainly does not, as we do have for now. Shen Ulti backing, or uh, grouping up rather, in that middle lane. Deadly Brother is a little bit um, in a precarious situation right now. Say gets charmed up, takes quite a lot of damage because of that. Uh, because of, of course, the damage increase you get on yourself when you're charmed. And, and they are looking to rotate over towards that middle lane, maybe try and take the inhibitor. But then once again, they're going to have to throw, go through that Ultraviris team. And I don't think they actually want to do that for now. Ultraviris, they have a very scary team coming their way in Shen Ulti. Grouping up, homing down the middle lane. And uh, for right now, it's Mupsio. Can that guy stay alive? Can we see another great charm landed by Mazarin? It's it's all about the pick, and I would have loved to see Mazarin go for his trademark Oriana, because that's the way that usually Ultraviris will engage these team fights. It's all about the pick, how you get it, how you get it done, 
And that is going to be on Mazarin, or possibly a good Annie stun from Coralius. All right, so both teams here in that middle lane facing off in a little bit of a Mexican standoff, as I like to call it. As right now, we do have the channel ulti barging in, but they decide against it in the end, uh, probably because they find the Ultraviras team a little bit too scary to deal with. At this point, we do have MBS Law lurking around the side, as he will be using that thrill of the hunt when he senses a weak target. Of course, ooh, good Sonic Wave lands on Deadly Brother, as we do have a turret going down in that bottom lane. Uh, was actually uh, in the top lane, sorry, yeah. Yeah, turret and top lane went down as a huge wave pushing in, actually taking a turret for Ultra Vera. So they're pushed into their base, they can't leave their base, and they're still finding a way to take turrets down. But now damage coming in on that middle inhibitor. Will Ultra Virus be able to defend? Yeah, Mopsio gets jumped on. He is trying to get uh, get out of there. As we do have the Cullen coming out once again. Good crescendo. MBS Low gets stunned up. He is now trying to get out himself. As we do have Mazarin using the uh, Spirit Rush defensively. And this is going to be an inhibitor for the uh, Shen Ulti lineup. As Crusoe's almost managed to get Coralius there. But he did not quite hit. Talisman of Ascension getting activated. And they are just backing away for now. And I believe they will be quite happy with the result of that. I mean, I'd be pretty happy with that if it went that way every time I went in. Uh, no one guess. But when you look at it, they're not really going for, for kills right now. They just wanted the objective. They took it down and then back on offer. Now, that's the second time they've taken that middle inhibitor. So... They weren't able to capitalize it the first time. I, I don't think they're necessarily going to be able to capitalize on it this time either. The big issue is going to be the Baron buff respawning in a minute and a half. And with a ton of gold in their pockets. And you can just look at the items starting to come out. You're already going to see double armor items there for Renekton. As well as a damage item now built there in that uh, Ravenous Hydra. But you know, you're going to see some damage out there for, uh, for Rengar too. He actually has three damage items in what looks to be the makings of a Black Cleaver Trinity Force. And of course, you gotta look toward that Bone Tooth Necklace. He does have uh, a few trophies on that, I believe. Let's see if he has. Um, he's got three trophies, I believe. Yeah, he's, got, he's got four trophies. He has ah, the yeah. benefit from having those three trophies that give him armor penetration as well as extra CDRs. So, I mean, that's cool and everything. If he can get up to, I think the big deal with the uh, the Bone Tooth Necklace is that you want the nine trophies, which increases the range of his leaps and let him, let him just be an incredible engage. But now with Baron respawning in 30 seconds, does Ultra Virus have what it takes to stop this from once again going over to, uh, to Shen Ulti, either via steel or by uh, just being very strong in that area? It would be funny if um, Ultra Virus or Shen Ulti rather would just back away and let uh, Ultra Virus <laughs> start that Baron and just casually steal it. However, they are rotating over towards that bottom lane as Mopsio will be clearing off that huge, huge minion wave that just took down their turrets. In the middle lane, we do have once again some members of both teams squaring off, and Mazarin will be gifted over that blue buff to get that mana regeneration running. And this is probably going to be quite an important fight as both teams are right now just uh, squaring off, as I said earlier, near the Baron area. And that is really where it's going to ha happen, if you'd ask me. Now, now, Deadly Brothers got for the Captain Jack build, uh, which isn't necessarily a build for an AD carry. Uh, it just means that on a Sivir, you build a Banshee's Veil. Because that means you have two spell shields, you have the ability to flash away. Uh, flash actually down now, but there's the engage. Yeah, Cruises goes in, doesn't quite manage to get the re uh, Dragon's Rage out, as he was stunned up. Now we do have Alan here trying to get back in once again. He gets stunned up twice, and he will be making an escape himself. We did have the on the hunt coming out, so that will be on cooldown for the next 40 seconds or so. However, we do have Shen Ulti trying to capitalize on that by just trying to push that middle lane. And it is looking like um, they are putting on some good pressure as uh, Mopsio just steals away that red buff. So for right now, very, very scary times. We're going to see a lot of these sort of half engages as Viras look to not only defend their base, but put on enough pressure to, uh, I, I guess, take the pressure off of having to defend at their inhibitors, which, though down, 
will respawn one minute sooner here in Season 4, as it only takes about five minutes to respawn instead of six. Yeah, they are heading towards that Baron pit right now. And I, it is not looking like they're actually going for it. Oh, Alanir gets there. caught, takes a lot of damage. Explosive cask comes out, but that actually saves him from dying. As right now, Deadly Brother looking around the side to get a pick or two, maybe. But he is all alone, as we do have him grouping up with NBS Law and Coralius. Coralius has got his flash tibbers available. So if he does manage to land that perfectly, that is going to be disastrous for the um, uh, Shen Ulti lineup. And they do recognize the threat, as we did see quite some good Tibbers coming out. But then again, we did see quite some not so good Tibbers coming out as well. It's it's true. It's kind of hit or miss. Uh, quite literally, you got to hit the Tibbers on to at least a semi carry. Uh, you know, if you want to hit the you know the two carries out there at the back. Oh, Zay actually getting it bursted down there at the very beginning of the fight. Yeah, he takes a lot of damage. Crescendo comes out. That will stun up Karani's daddy brother gets forced out as well. Now Alanir in desperation to get out. Shutdown coming on in him, but Crusoe's will bite the dust as well. That is a one for one, as we do have a great <laughs> barrel, barrel, barrel coming down on Karanis, which will be finishing him off. Adams takes a lot of damage. MBS Law in trouble as he dove himself on Say. That is a one for two in favor of Shen Ulti for now. Yeah, it would have been one for one, but Coralius likes to walk on barrels, and he's like, oh, what's this doing here? And, and that's extremely inappropriate because he's underage and can't even drink yet, so H7 taught him the, uh, the, uh, the pain of underage drinking there and was able to take him out there. And the big thing to watch out for now was that once again we have these fights where it's, you know, maybe one person dies, maybe two people die, but nothing happens off of it. This time around, it's going to be a Baron, at least an attempt here, by Shen Ulti. And how ironic if Ultra Barons are going to be able to steal this one away. Yeah, that would be quite the the steal. However, it is not looking like they have anything to take it. Um, a, a good uh, Orb of Deception would be fun. As he does manage to get it with the Orb of Deception. Are you kidding me? Are you me? for real? And right Can now, you actually... Brother gets dead. Stunned up. Mazarin is unstoppable with the, with the uh, Baron buff. They are right now trying to chase him down. Once again, good crescendo locking him up. That is a good uh, trade for now for Shen Ulti. Mazarin desperately trying to get out. Mopsio trying to chase him down as he will be forced to zone. He has Mopsio taking a lot of damage. And here comes Alanir finishing off Mopsio. This fight is continuing quite long. Crusoe has got himself a Guardian's Angel as he is joining the fight. Say trying to get out as well. And Bisdol trying to follow up on that. Adam's going down to Coralius. Say somehow gets away. Crusoe's now trying to get as away as well. He will be flashing. We do have Coralius uh, with a Tibbers trying to chase him down, but it is not looking like he will be able to do so. Oh, and mid lane, we got NBS versus Say now. Say will go down here. No, he's able to heal up just a little bit off of Cold Elite. Finally taken out there by the, uh, the Empowered Savagery you pick up that kill. So almost every single one of those 1v1, uh, of those lane matchups, 80 carries taking out 80 carries, support battle one out there by Coralius, NVS won his 1v1 there by, uh, versus Say, and now it's gonna be a turret taken down in the mid lane as still behind, but pushing back. Ultra yeah. Virus finally won a team fight. I was half choking about the Orb of Deception and then he actually managed to <laughs> land it. Too. Oh, Mazarin, though. Yeah, Sounds takes a lot of low. damage uh, because of the uh, explosive cast right now. They are trying to take down that middle inhibitor. Uh, good Dragon's Rage comes out of Crusoe as he gets stunned up. So you have the Talaman of Ascension coming out, trying to uh, maybe make something happen on Crusoe's. But then again, the only inhibitor that is down right now is the inhibitor of Shenulti. Deadly Brothers split pushing for some reason right now. You don't really need to split push at 52 minutes into the game when you have an inhib down mid and you're just looking to... Uh, maybe he's doing that to start up pressure, but now he's actually going to go towards Dragon. He's got 85,000 gold over the course of his entire team. I'm not sure what they necessarily need right now are items, but if you do want to take a look at items, there are some interesting things to talk about. Annie went for a first completed third tier item as a, uh, a Leandry's Torment. Now with a uh, Rampage down there is NBS. He's uh, gonna, it, he got the kill without using his ult. Now he ults away. He can go in if he wants. Oh, and it looks like he's gonna turn around. Yeah, he might be trying to backdoor this inhibitor. Now his opposing team <laughs> is standing by. Yeah. 
is uh, standing on a ward, so that is not going to be favorable for him if he decides to go in, as he does decide against it, it looks like, in the end, as he is waiting for his team to rejoin him, and his team is coming towards him fairly quickly, but he is uh, looking a little... Um, uh, keen he's, going, he's going for the obvious back door. He's not trying to be sneaky <laughs> about it. He knows he can deal a ton of damage. Just looking to take that down. He's just fully tanking up Sane. We cannot kill him in time. And there's going to be a 1v2 now in the top lane. Bottom turret going in. Yeah, they are going in there towards uh, Adams. Adams getting knocked off by the Sultan battery. Does manage to get a crescendo off only on Corrales right now. Sane trying to get in there as well. He gets really, really deep, but he takes a lot of damage. And he will get popped in towards the revive of his Guardian's Angel. As in the meantime, we do have H7 going down. Say taking a lot of damage. Will be finished off by Corrales. Crusoe's does manage to get a good Dragon's Rage off. But will it be enough? It is not looking like it. As he gets popped in towards his Guardian Angel revive as well. Alanir trying to follow that one up. Crusoe gets away. And this is uh, only the Nexus still standing for Shenalty. Oh, and now it's actually going to be a 1v1. Mopsio versus Deadly Brother takes him out, tries to finish off Eleanor. And now with his death, I I'm pretty sure uh, Ultra Varus can just win now. It's only going to be Crusoe's candy keep the Nexus alive down to half HP. And Ace, the Nexus falls. And it's Ultra Varus at 55 minutes, finally able to take down Shen Ulti. Yeah, the Game of Throws, as we like to call it, of course. There I have it, ladies and gentlemen. Ultra Varus taking this game. And uh, quite, well, it, I, I would not call it a convincing fashion, but uh, it was really, really close for the entirety of the game, uh, I, I guess you could call it. As for now, we will be heading in towards a quick break. When we continue, the second game of the best of three between Ultraviers and Shen Ulti is going to unravel. Don't go anywhere. And you're off.